हेलो एवरीवन एंड थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग एडुपीडिया वर्ल्ड वीडियोस आई एम मनीष अग्रवाल एंड टुडे विल कंटिन्यू विद बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स वी स्टार्टेड इन द लास्ट सेशन राइट सो लेट्स बिगिन विद एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय एन एटम लेट्स से यू हैव अ पीस ऑफ गोल्ड एंड यू स्टार्ट ब्रेकिंग इट इनटू स्मॉलर पीसेस एंड यू कीप ऑन डूइंग दैट अंटिल यू ऑब्टेन द स्मॉलेस्ट पॉसिबल पीस ऑफ गोल्ड this smallest piece will be the atom of gold why do i call it the smallest piece because once you break the atom the entities you obtain from it will no longer represent gold because they will not have the properties of gold they, they will turn out to be something entirely different so an atom is nothing but the smallest part of an element and the one which also has all of its properties okay so these are the two conditions you need to meet in order to obtain an atom whereas a molecule again is the smallest part but of a compound okay so say you have a salt particle it is already quite small but you continue to break it into smaller and smaller pieces the smallest piece which will obtain from it will be the molecule of salt okay it is actually called sodium chloride in chemical terms and it is represented by nacl there are a lot of example of atoms and molecules around us say you can have a sodium atom or helium atom represented by capital h small e and a carbon atom represented by c and so on similarly there are many molecules like sodium chloride which is your table salt carbon dioxide co2 and water h2o if you will observe here another point between atoms and molecules is a molecule is nothing but a combination of two or more atoms so nacl is formed by combination of a sodium atom with a chlorine atom co2 is formed with combination of carbon and oxygen similarly h2o by combination of h and o all right the picture on the left hand side depicts an atom it can be an atom of say nitrogen calcium helium any other element okay whereas to depict a molecule you need two or more atoms linked together by a chemical bond so let's say you have no2 molecule of nitrogen dioxide it will have two oxygen atoms linked with an atom of nitrogen these are not their original shapes but this is how you can depict them in terms okay you can understand easily so another point which you need to note between atoms and molecules is usually atoms cannot exist independently that is on their own all right but molecule by itself comes out to be quite stable okay so let's say you have hydrogen gas in the atmosphere all right you already know that the hydrogen gas in the atmosphere doesn't actually exist as a sample of hydrogen atoms but it exists as a sample of hydrogen molecules okay so the hydrogen gas doesn't exist as single h but it exists as h2 which is nothing but a molecule of hydrogen similarly oxygen gas doesn't actually exist as o it exists as o2 in fact the atoms of oxygen can also combine together as o3 which is the ozone gas it is again present in the atmosphere but it is not used for respiration all right so similarly there are many other gases like nitrogen chlorine they all exist in their molecular form okay so n2 cl2 i2 all right so you do not see them in their atomic forms okay you can separate the atoms from the molecule in a laboratory and observe their behavior all right but in independent form in the atmosphere they only exist in the molecular form there are some gases like helium argon neon okay the noble gases they exist in atomic form apart from that all the gases exist only in molecular form 
let's see how do you depict a molecule so you have here C6H12O6 which is nothing but a molecule of glucose all right the glucose which you take in in your daily diet so what does this formula depict C6H12O6 this is a formula of the molecule of glucose it depicts that the glucose molecule is formed by combination of three different atoms that is of carbon hydrogen and oxygen the subscript here 612 and 6 represents the exact number of atoms which have come together to form the single molecule all right so six atoms of carbon have combined with 12 atoms of hydrogen which again have combined with six atoms of oxygen in order to form one single molecule of glucose all right so one molecule can have many different atoms together all right another example say c4h8 it is nothing but combination of four atoms of carbon and eight atoms of hydrogen okay then again you can have k4fecn6 now this is a complex molecule okay you will study them in detail in your class 12 it is formed by combination of four potassium atoms one iron atom and six molecules of cyanide cn is cyanide molecule okay so this is a combination of atoms and molecule so it is a complex molecule let's see if you can calculate number of atoms if i tell you the number of molecules say you have a question number you have to calculate number of hydrogen atoms in four molecules of glucose what we'll do here is we'll simply use the unitary method we studied in the last session so you know that one molecule okay we can already see that one molecule of okay let me just change the color you can see that one molecule of glucose has 12 atoms of hydrogen all right we can see that here one molecule of glucose has 12 atoms of hydrogen so you have to calculate number of hydrogen atoms in four molecules all right let's say it is x now what we do is we cross multiply so i have x into one molecule is equal to 12 atoms of hydrogen multiplied by four molecules so x is equal to 12 into 4 which is 48 atoms so four atoms of glucose will have 48 atoms of hydrogen let's take another example say you have three dozen molecules of glucose Right, let's try, take three dozen molecules of glucose and now you have to calculate number of carbon atoms in this three dozen molecules okay. so we already know that one dozen has 12 entities so three dozen molecules so three dozen molecules of glucose implies 3 into 12 all right that is 36 molecules of glucose so now the question has become same as the previous one all right except for the number of molecules there you had four molecules of glucose here you have actually 36 molecules of glucose so now if i have to calculate the number of carbon atoms one molecule of glucose has six atoms of carbon all right so 36 molecules will have say x atoms of carbon what you do is you cross multiply so x is equal to 6 into 36 okay so this is the number of carbon atoms which is present in three dozen molecules of glucose okay so let's quickly calculate what will be the number 216 so you have 216 atoms of carbon in three dozen molecules of 
glucose so now you get the gist of this so let's move on to the last basic principle which we have to take into account it is the matter okay so what is matter well you already know anything which occupies space and has mass so everything that you see around you is nothing but matter so matter can be classified further based on say its physical state or based on its composition based on physical state we classify matter into solid liquid and gas okay so you already know what is solid what is liquid what is gas for example you have ice it is solid form of water the drinking water the water which you drink is the liquid form okay and the steam which you obtain after boiling is the gaseous form of water whereas when we say matter when we classify matter based on composition we classify it into mixtures and pure substances so let's say again you have water pure water you haven't mixed it with any other minerals or any other substance it is pure substance whereas a mixture mixture is combination of two or more different compounds okay two or more different elements or two or more different substances in varying proportions all right we'll study them further in different chapters okay but let's just see quickly what we actually mean here say you want to divide matter based on its physical state you want to divide it into solid liquid and gas how do we do it we take molecules or atoms say you have water so you take molecules of water and bound them okay you bind them with each other very compactly okay so what you will obtain is the solid form of water when the same molecules are relatively loosely bound you will get the liquid form so the difference the key difference between solid liquid and gas is one that the molecules in solid are very compactly very strongly bound together in liquid they are relatively less bound in gaseous they are completely unbound okay in okay we can assume that the gaseous molecules are not bound to each other they are free to move okay and uh, the next difference which you can obviously see is that a solid has definite shape and definite volume so your laptop your mobile okay your pen these are all solid objects so they have a definite shape unless you break them and they also have a definite volume similarly liquid has a definite volume okay you have 1 liter of water so it will always remain to be 1 liter even if you put it into a 2 liter container the container will be half filled so volume of liquid is fixed but shape is not fixed if you change the container the shape of the liquid the shape of water will also change so liquid has definite volume but not definite shape whereas gas has neither definite volume nor definite shape the shape is easily understandable okay gas is not something tangible enough to be kept in a particular shape whatever is the container in which gas is present the gas takes the shape of that container okay so just like liquid but the difference is gas also doesn't have a fixed volume if you keep gaseous molecules in a 2 liter container it will occupy each and every corner each and every part of that container and if you take the same sample of gas and keep it in a 1 liter container it will again occupy each and